Hi everyone, so um, my genetic project was in regards to hearing loss. Um, this was a topic that I chose because my dad was actually born deaf. He was born three months premature and they believe that since they actually kept him in the incubator too long that created damage to um, his he uh, hearing. So even though that is not based on genetics, it still is close to my heart so that's why I chose this um, topic. Um, so back, some background in uh, regards to hearing loss is it's actually been uh, discovered and been known for a really long time. Um, I always think that it's something that was only known in like the 1800s and nothing before that existed. Um, but it's actually started in Egypt where um, the Egyptians saw that there was wax buildup that was creating hearing loss. I know a lot of us, um, especially my fiance, uh, he'll hate me for saying this, but um, wax can create a lot of um, hearing issues or you're unable to hear. Um, but so first they made a correlation to that. Uh, but then also in Greece, um, uh, Aristotle talked about the first deaf community. And then uh, later on, uh, Ecuador uh, created the first deaf school. I know New Jersey, um, there are deaf schools and also um, like my dad, he went to RIT, which had a um, hearing loss program, um, so they were able to sign to him for him to understand um, what the t they were talking about. Um, so there are multiple types of hearing loss. The first one is non-somatic hearing loss. Um, this is not due to one symptom. Um, it's all, it can be a range of things that can um, occur with it. Um, also, there are different degrees of hearing loss. People might have minor hearing loss. People might have uh, total hearing loss. Um, a lot of times people have a correlation to this with their age. Um, some older people, as you get older, you might lose your hearing loss or you might lose your hearing. Um, also, this hearing loss is um, permanent loss to the inner ear. Um, the inner ear is compri uh, composed of the cochlea, uh, which is this blue part here which creates the vibrations to go to the brain to be uh, to the brain to understand the sounds. Uh, there's also conductive hearing loss. This means that the inner ear there's small bones that have the vibrations that the vibrations bounce off of to then go into the cochlea to go to the brain. Um, the very small bones if they are damaged then they can create issues um, for the hearing. So the inner ear is composed of here, and those are the small bones that it does um, comprise of. Also, um, babies can be diagnosed with hearing loss before they even know how to speak. Um, I know there's a lot of movies or TV shows that show testing for uh, infants. Um, in regards to this, I'm sorry, I'm going to move because my cats are about to make a lot of noise. I'm sorry. So then also, postingly hearing loss, this is when a child already knows how to speak and then they lose their hearing. This can be more difficult for the child to um, learn how to go about those sounds because they know what something is supposed to hear like, but they are unable to make that correlation. Um, so the molecular cause of this disorder is a lot of times it's in the inner ear. There's cilia that um, are little pieces of hair that help transmit the sound waves. Um, also, a lot of times it's autosomal recessive um, in most cases. Uh, the modes of inheritance is, like I said, autosomal recessive, um, but there's also a lot of different ways that this can be um, transmitted, like the x links pattern. Uh, this was the pedigree chart that I had made for this class, since it was autosomal recessive. Um, you can see like Tim, he um, did have the trait, but then none of his children had the trait. While Mary had the trait, and Mary had um, children that did carry the trait. Um, for options for genetic testing, there was actually not a lot of research or not a lot of like direct articles that explain this. Um, but there are uh, universities like Cincinnati that have um, companies, Otosec, um, I might be saying that wrong, in regards to testing being done for patients. Basically, they um, are able to take blood panels and test them. Um, there was a lot of cons with this because it does take a very long time and it's also very expensive. 
Um, and the last piece I have is cochlear implants. Um, cochlear implants are new surgical implants that are placed in the ear. Um, my father had recently got them probably about 10 years ago. Uh, it's a surgical procedure where they open up the skull and then they put a um, wire around the cochlea, which is also magnetic, so it's able to take the vibrations that go into his ear. The cochlea is able to transmit them to the brain, and the transmitter is basically the piece of where the outside of the um, skin to the inside of the skin that attaches to the cochlea. Um, it is very interesting knowing firsthand um, if someone only has partial hearing and then they get the cochlear implants. Once they get the cochlear implants, they will not be able to hear at all. And then here are my references, and thanks for watching.